Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is the DVD Blu-ray drive. It's a reader and a writer. And this is fairly easy. You can even use this for these instructions for upgrading as well. Uh, to put a drive in, you need to take not only the side of the case out that we've been working on, but the other side as well. So you can get access to the mounting screws that need to go in to the drive once you slide it in to one of the available bays. In this case here, there's nine bays. The top three have no cages in them right now, where hard drives or other devices may go. And <clears throat> that would be on the top of the machine anywhere where I would want to quickly access the optical drive to drop DVDs in when I do need to. To take this, um, to prep your case, you need to pop one of these front panels off. And that's just a matter, depending on your case, of either snapping it out or undoing a couple of screws. Comes off. Drive slides in. Don't force it, it will go on its own if it can. Slide it in, line it up at the front of your panel, and then it comes with mounting screws that will then fit in your case. The screws go on both sides. One more will go there. Two cables go into the optical drive. One's a SATA or serial ATA cable. This is a serial ATA drive. And then one will go for the power. I'm gonna leave these cables out for now, but one will go into the power supply, one will go into the motherboard. In this case here, this is a three gigabyte, uh, gigabit rather, um, drive. Uh, I, my hard drive is six, so I'll want to be careful which spot I put them in down here under the SATA connectors. Okay, we got our DVD drive in, and we've got a SATA cable for data connected to it, and this will go into the motherboard. Uh, again, just read your motherboard manual, it'll tell you where it should go. Um, in this case here, I've got some options down below, but I want to be careful because this motherboard supports the uh, SATA six gigabit uh, per second bandwidth, and so I want to make sure I plug this guy into the 3 gigabit one because that's what the drive supports. The next device I'm putting in is the hard drive. This is a 2 terabyte hard drive, uh, the first one to support allegedly 6 gigabit per second transfer rate, so I haven't seen too many ben benchmarks that tout that, but that's what this is, and maybe over time or with a firmware upgrade it'll kick in. But for now, Mechanically to put it in, it's going to rest in a drive cage that comes in your case. Just check your case's manual, it'll tell you where these types of devices can go. The case also came with large screws that will mount into this drive. I did buy a bare bones kit and I didn't realize until after I ordered it. That means that it just came with a drive and a nice pouch. And so I have to supply a power cable for it and a data cable. Uh, luckily, I bought a modular power supply that came with a whole bag of cables. This uh, is in a serial ATA cable, so what I'll do is I'll plug this into the power supply and then run it into a device like this guy. But for now, mechanically, um, my case has me take these thumb screws out. There's eight of them, four on this side for this drive cage, which can support three drives, and then there's four on the other side. I've got the four on the other side off already. this off here and this guy should just there it goes come out. Now in my case I do have uh, a fan in the front of each drive bay so that's what these guys are for power for it. This is a little switch for the speed of it but this guy is for power for the fan. I'll do all the power connections at the end because I do have a fairly large video card sticking here and I want to try to route cables as neatly as I can around it. So we'll do that hopefully very shortly. Mechanically, you just stick the drive into the drive cage. I'm gonna put it on the bottom. Um, when you do slide it in, you wanna make sure that you put it in so that the back of it where the cables attach for power and data are available. Don't stick it in the other way where you, then you can't get at them. And then 
you're just gonna drive the screws in to mount it and that's it. Then once that's in, I'll put the drive cage back in. I'll screw these thumb screws back in, four on each side to lock the whole cage in place. I'm only using one of the three available bays right now. And then I'll attach the data cable to the motherboard. In this case here, this is a six gigabit um, device, so I'm gonna wanna make sure I put that into the right SATA connection in the motherboard. And that's just following the directions. So I'll go ahead and get this done, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, so we're back with our hard drive in there. I did have to get the uh, six gigabit data cable, there it is. Um, that came with the motherboard and make sure it goes to the right port in here. This guy's still hanging out, he'll be attached soon. However, as I mentioned earlier, I was hoping to keep the um, second drive bay's uh, optional mounting fan, uh, connect, uh, holder for a mounting fan attached. However, with it in there, and back of this bay, which I took out, this is the middle one, I wasn't able to get the data cable in there. It wasn't happy, so I did have to remove it. Was what I was planning on. However, that does happen. There's one other thing I'll mention at this point as well. This is the side of the case that goes on this side. Because this guy is a monster, taking up a ton of room for the cooling of the CPU, it is now getting in the way of another bracket for optional, another optional fan for the side that this case provides. Um, my only real option for dealing with this now is to break or cut these two pieces off Taking this full plastic piece off will ruin the integrity of the screen that's here. <clears throat> and I did verify that with the manufacturer of the case, that that's um, the best option there. It's just snap these things off, and I'll do that later. Next up is the RAM. I have three cards of four gigabyte each for a total of 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, you do not need that much RAM if you're building just a gaming machine. Um, I got this much because I'm also going to use it to run uh, one or more virtual machines at the same time and uh, I can benefit from, from that there. Another reason to get this much RAM might be if you're doing a lot of heavy image processing, um, be it still images or um, video. So, memory is really easy to install. Right now there's no memory installed in the machine. Memory would normally go right here. Um, does look like we'll have some clearance. Uh, this is DDR3 RAM. Um, it came in a pack of three because with DDR3 RAM you want to, um, if you want to take full advantage of what it offers, you want to install three cards at a time because the memory control and the CPU will access it more efficiently that way. So to install the RAM, again, definitely don't hold it by any of the I see exposures, which in this case, this one doesn't really have too much because it has a heat sink on it. Um, the memory is notched in a way that helps you not put it in wrong if you try to. Uh, it does need to apply a little pressure to get it to go. There is clips at the edge of each slot. You want to push those both back and then take the RAM, line it up with the notch in the slot, and then going straight down once it's in there you want to then just push down hard enough as long as it's lined up right to get it to click it is it does require a little pressure so you do have to push down but again don't push unless you know that everything is lined up correctly pop the other two in real quick open it up Before I push down, I'm going to make sure it's lined up and looks good. Push down, both clips go back in place on their own. One last one. Now follow the motherboard for where these should go. Uh, in this case here, these blue slots are the first three that make sense for installing uh, three cards of DDR3 RAM. Okay. Um, Definitely before you buy the RAM, make sure the motherboard is compatible with the RAM you're buying and that has to do with speed and, and uh, they come in various sizes, also your chip, your CPU, you want to make sure that's all compatible.